Welcome to Decoding CTO Kasten. Today I am bringing a case, a case of LCX CTO uh, with an ambiguous cap, proximal cap, which we did with uh, Stingray re-entry after I was guided entry. Um, yeah, uh, this case was done in RR Hospital, Del Delhi, along with Dr. Kesho Murthy. My patient is a 44-year-old male, old PTCA with uh, stunt to LAD and Ramus. He had failed PCA to LCX CTO. Presented with uh, exertional angina despite optimal medical therapy, normal sinus rhythm, good LVRV function. He has uh, systemic hypertension and uh, diabetes mellitus. So this is the angiogram of left system uh, during last uh, attempted CTO PCI. You can see patent stunt in LAD and uh, Patent stunt in ramus, but there is uh, a disease in uh, mid of the stunt in ramus, and there is a total occlusion in LCX without uh, you know proximal cap location. The same thing here in a leucoidal view. Yeah, so the distal vessel is quite good, and uh, it's a big territory, and in fact, it is a left dominant system. So right coronary artery is basically non-dominant and a small vessel, uh, normal. And this was the first attempt uh, during which uh, the wire, this is a Gaia wire which went subintimally. You can see uh, after pulling back wire, there is a clear subintimal contrast tracking, uh, which is quite visible. So, and this was uh, stopped uh, because of the wire in so this is the anatomicogram of a uh, patient. So there are two strands, one in LED and ramus. And uh, yeah, this is, there is no proximal cap. And it's a very short CTO and it's a straight segment. There is no angulation. And in fact, there is no calcium also here. And there is a good uh, zone, you know, even if we do a re-entry. And uh, there are collaterals, uh, there are two epicardial collaterals coming from ramus in which there is a stunt and, uh, you know, wrist gnosis uh, or instant gnosis. And there are septal collaterals, but the origin of septal collateral is quite uh, angulated. So entry may become tough, uh, but otherwise uh, uh, once entered, uh, there is a good collateral, almost CC2 collateral. So this is the JCTO score two, and uh, yeah, this is a plan of wiring strategy with the uh, APCTO algorithm. So as this patient had a proximal ambiguity, proximal cap ambiguity, so we can go ahead with an IVAS guided entry as we have a good side branch to do an IVAS. And also the patient has a good distal vessel, so which makes our integrated wiring quite uh, easy. So we can go ahead with an anti-grade uh, wire escalation method. And if the wire escalation is uh, successful, true to true, then you know we can close the case. Or if it goes to true to subintima, then we can either re-enter or we can do a parallel wiring. Or the, because there, is, there are good collaterals, uh, epicardial as well as septal collateral, we can even go retrograde, uh, probably uh, through septal as a first strategy. Uh, if it doesn't happen, you know, we can go through epicardial collateral after dilating ramus, instant stenosis. Okay, so here yeah, technical challenges in this case are ambiguous entry. So we are using anyway I was uh, for proximal cap entry. Instant stenosis in donor vessel, especially ramus uh, uh, instant stenosis. Uh, it's always better, you know, treat it before going for retrograde wiring. And tortuous epicardial collateral from Ramus to OM. So we can use uh, CO03 or Caravel microcatheter you know, to overcome this tortuosity. So mild LMCA disease, uh, especially austral LMCA disease. And this needs a special attention uh, when you're using a, uh, doing a retrograde because uh, we should be quite careful while using you know, ping pong guide. And also, uh, even in anti-grad wiring, if we use a 8 French guide, then we should be quite careful uh, to avoid uh, 
ischemia because it's a dominant left circumflex. So this is a procedure which we planned, uh, you know, I was guided entry. So you can see uh, pre-procedural injections. So it's a dominant LCX. Uh, and uh, you can see, you know, this is a eight French guide. We planned a slip stream technique. Almost, you know, reflex is significantly reduced and the guide is almost, uh, you know, uh, occupying the entire LMCA ostium. So this is a kind of a uh, bit of difficult scenario because these patients may develop uh, ischemia in the due course of uh, procedure uh, due to which you may have to either uh, downsize your guiding catheter or changing plan or you have to pull your guiding catheter out, uh, you know, or to do procedure. So this is what I did. Uh, we entered the f first uh, uh, so OM, that uh, OM2 and did an IWAS. So this is an IWAS with optic-cross catheter. You can see, see this is the uh, LCX and which is joining, uh, uh, you know, the OM. You can see here at 11 o'clock, this is the LCX. So I'll show you in light. So yeah, this is the section at which, you know, you are not seeing anything around, you know, this vessel. And the next section here, you can see there is a, uh, disturbance in the uh, at 11 o'clock area this is nothing but the main branch which is going to come and join this vessel and you can see this hypoechoic area is basically media so you can see here so this is all media which is uh, uh, shown by arrows and this is the block that is the intimal block and the next section you can see uh, the vessel joined OM almost it is the point of confluence of uh, LCX with uh, OM and this is uh, complete LCX proximal so so there is a branch at 11 o'clock that LCX is sitting at 11 o'clock so next what we did is on the same wire so we sent a crusade catheter you can see here uh, on the same wire crusade catheter is sitting exactly at the uh, um, I was uh, where you know LCX was present on the I was you can see here this is optic cross tip this is a transducer tip and this is the tip of crusade catheter and this is the uh, over the wire exit port of uh, crusade catheter so and we used a uh, Gaia 2 wire to enter you can see here so Gaia 2 is exiting from this point of crusade and just entering into the um, LCX and then we did an IOS you can see this is the Y which entered into LCX I'll show you in stick films yeah so you can see here so this is the LCX and this is the OM from which we are doing an IOS and this is the Y the bright spot the wire is exactly inside the you know media but it is not at the center of you know intimal plug if it is at the center of intimal plug we can say uh, somewhere here so you can definitely say it is in the um, uh, yeah uh, intimal entry uh, when it is in the periphery so it is a bit difficult to say whether it is intimal or you know uh, subintimal entry so for me it appeared like it's not appeared okay but by this time patient started going into low pressures uh, and uh, he developed ischemia because of eight French catheter sitting in a diseased hostile LMCA. So we had to quickly change our plan. So I had to pull out Ivers catheter. So, so this is how we can pull out Ivers catheter. You just pull the wire back and again advance it. Now, yeah, again pull it back and advance it so now we can say i was catheter is outside our wire so which we can pull off you know without moving wire as well as crusade catheter so this is how we have to remove uh, i was catheter you can see the catheter is out now so we can remove i was catheter uh, when we use uh, slipstream technique so <clears throat> yeah so the next we i advance this wire 
due to you know ischemia of the patient, uh, which patient developed. So uh, I I want to complete the case fast. So I don't want this wire subsequently you know which went into the side branch. You can see here. So the wire went into side branch. So basically, I'm not sure whether it is intimal entry, and also uh, the wire went into uh, side branch. So the next challenge is, you know, I have to bring the wire back into the main LCX. So we did a little bit of redirection into the LCX using two orthogonal views. You can see here. So now the wire came into LCX, but it is clearly uh, looking subintimal. So now the wire is in subintimal position. So we can switch to uh, Stingray reentry here. So where should I re-enter? So, and this is where this OM is joining. So we have to re-enter before this OM, OM3, so somewhere here. So this is a good point for re-entry. So once re-entry zone is uh, identified, the next step is you have to create a path for Stingray. So in this case, what we did as Caravel was advanced, not advancing initially, I took a nano cross balloon. This is a nano cross balloon. We did a dilatation at the proximal cap, and after that, I advanced the caravel over the wire, so to the uh, re-entry zone. This is a re-entry zone into which caravel is advanced. And once caravel is advanced, we can exchange wire to miracle six. This is miracle six wire positioned at re-entry zone, and then stingray is brought in. Um, uh, uh, from um, exchanging caraval. So this is a stingray, you can see the two bright spots here. So once stingray is in, you know, we have to choose the right view after uh, inflating stingray balloon. You can see this stingray balloon is inflated and you can see two wings here. So this is not the ideal view for re-entry. So go to the 90 degrees view, view from this view. This is uh, a epicordal to areocordal we went to allow cordal that is 90 degrees you can see here so there is uh, wings are not visible there is a thin contrast is visible this is a view where it is basically you know side view of uh, stingray so this is where there will be an exit point towards this another exit outside so to identify luminal exit so we can give contrast uh, to understand. See, we give contrast. So and lumen is filling on this side. So that means we have to go through the uh, exit towards this. So that's what exactly we did. We took a, a stingray wire to give a stick. You can see uh, this is one exit. The exit proximal to the uh, uh, proximal marker. So this is the proximal marker. This is a distal marker. The exit proximal to the proximal marker is actually going into the uh, lumen. So this is the stingray wire which is just entered into the lumen. You can see here, yeah, wire went off this exit into the lumen. And once uh, entry is created, we swapped to pilot wire. And you can see this is a pilot wire, pilot 50. So you can just see, you know, how it is going. It just went of stingray exit you know easily into the branch so and then we did a check angio just to see you know where the wire is sitting so the wire is sitting in the true lumen distally so once that is confirmed we pre dilated and then we placed a stunt uh, uh, using i was as a guide uh, for both sizing as well as uh, choosing length and this is uh, 2.75 uh, 20 yeah so this is a, a pre angiogram so you can see and this is a post uh, angioplasty with uh, 2.75 uh, 20 millimeter stunt so result is quite good and uh, this is a post iOS uh, you can see 5.3 mm square is the distal reference area this is the MLA 5.3 mm square, and this uh, in proximal it is 6.1 mm square, and this is a proximal reference where we, we have uh, a block area around 50 percent and uh, a lumen area 5.6 mm square. So 
by I was also the result is quite good so we left it at the juncture so learning points from this case are slipstream technique helps in I was guided proximal cap entry but needs a eight French guide but sometimes if there is a osteal disease uh, in the vessel uh, it may create uh, ischemia and change of plan during procedure entry at the center of meat at the center of uh, intimal flock is uh, very important uh, but entry through the periphery it, though it is appeared inside the media may not be intimal uh, many times as in this case where it went subintimally Switch to stingray re-entry if anti-grade wire escalation ended in subintimal position. And road for stingray can be created by one or one point two five balloon dilatation or advancement of corset, uh, known as uh, bogey technique. Thank you.